Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing my five must-have kitchen essentials for vegans. These are the kitchen essentials that I wish I knew about when I decided to go vegan. They are items that I use all the time in my kitchen and I think that if you're either starting to cook, interested in going vegan, or you've been doing this for a while and you just want some tips of what could help out in the kitchen, this episode is for you. So, first item on the list is my nut milk bag. Absolutely love this kitchen gadget, and I use this to make my own almond milk at home. I also use this to make oat milk. Recipe for that is also on my blog. You can use it to squeeze tofu. You can squeeze out that excess water and then you can use it to make something like a mousse au chocolat. I just find that a nut milk bag keeps everything nice and tidy. It's got a nice little string at the end and you're all around just gonna have a lot cleaner of an experience. This makes a great makeshift coffee filter. You can also use it to make your own vegan cheeses at home as a cheesecloth. They cost like $10 on Amazon. You actually get two of them. And finally, if you're wondering how to clean it, just throw it in your laundry machine and it comes out brand spanking new. Next up is my wide mouth funnel. Maybe this is something that you don't have in your kitchen, but it is really handy to have, especially if you're a vegan. As a vegan, we cook with a lot of nuts, beans, seeds, and we need somewhere to put them, as in a jar, and this really nicely helps contain everything. You can put it on a jar to throw in beans, you can throw in almonds or any other nut. Chia seeds is a great one. Those things love to escape away, and it keeps everything nice and contained in your jar. Another thing you can do is you can use it to can soup or it's great for transferring homemade almond milk into jugs. How much is this? It's about $10 on Amazon. Well worth the price because you're gonna use this more than you think. Third up on my list is my mandolin. Ta-da! I use this kitchen gadget to really thinly slice vegetables. I've used it to thinly slice zucchini for something like my zucchini lasagna. It's also great for thinly slicing radish, basically anything that you wanna thinly slice, which is really handy when you're thinking of things like salads. If you also wanna thinly slice potatoes for scalloped potatoes, it's really great. All around, it makes it a lot more efficient. It makes those slices consistent and you get them really thin, which is a lot Lot harder to do with a knife. Another great thing about this tool is that it's got a nice little foldable stand that you can fold away and then it places pretty flat in any kind of drawer that you might have. You can also change the thickness that you want to make your vegetable. There is also a really cool feature on these mandolins that you can make your vegetables julienne. This would be great for something like making french fries. One thing that you should be careful about though when using this mandolin is that this blade is pretty sharp. So watch your fingers using something like a kitchen towel to, as a barrier between your hand and the mandolin I find works really great retail price is about $40 on Amazon really not that expensive there's lots of fun ways that you can kind of dress up your vegetables to make them feel really different in dishes fourth up on my list of kitchen must haves is this immersion blender you can use this to mix blend and emulsify pretty much anything that your heart desires. I've used this to mash up things like baby food, avocado and banana. You can mash that up and it's literally pureed in seconds. I also use this all the time when I'm making soups. It's really great to keep your recipes one pot because you're not transferring it into a blender and then transferring it back. This immersion blender is definitely better used on cooked foods or soft foods versus raw or hard foods. We're definitely not gonna wanna use it on ice. Leave that to your regular blender and use this on those softer foods. This device also doesn't take up a lot of kitchen space. It breaks up into two pieces, which is really nice, and it can fit in a really shallow drawer. It's also pretty easy to clean. You just take this end, you whisk it into some soapy water, and you're pretty much good to go. How much does this cost? It really depends on the brand. You're looking at about $50 to $100 for an immersion blender, and like I said, you're gonna be using this a lot. Our final kitchen gadget, number five, was a little too big to fit in my trusty bag, so I've got it down here. It is my trusty and beloved Vitamix. 
Now, this probably isn't a surprise to you. Everyone who loves a Vitamix can probably write a novel about how much they love their Vitamix, and I have to say that I am a convert as well. I absolutely love this blender. I use this every day. I call it my sous chef. This is the blender that is going to get your smoothies ultra smooth and creamy, and it really pulverizes really tough ingredients. It's very versatile. I have used it to pulse up oats into flour-like consistency. You can also do it with almonds to make almond flour. And I use this to make my own almond milk at home. The store-bought versions have gums and fillers in them. And when you're making homemade, you know that you're getting all the good ingredients. And you can even make your own nut butters with this. I'll make things like salad dressings. I love making a cashew-based cream sauce, things like Alfredo or cashew cheese sauce. And it just makes a really nice, smooth, and creamy outcome. But it actually is really easy to clean. I often will put it in my dishwasher when things are really sticky and dirty. But another thing that you can do is you can throw in some warm water, a little bit of dish soap, put the lid on, and give it a couple pulses, and it really cleans it quite well. Retail value is more expensive. You're looking at about $500 to $1,000, although they do have it cheaper at Costco. I would say if you're gonna spend money on one kitchen gadget this is the one to spend your money on there's no point in me even putting it away it is used so often in my house so now you know my five must-haves let me tell you what not to buy first up is a tofu press you can press tofu using a kitchen towel place a few heavy books on top I'd highly recommend the two spoons cookbook and wait 10 minutes therefore you can forego a tofu press, which also costs like $200. It's so stupid. The second up on my list of things not to buy is an avocado slicer. How do you even use this thing? Instead of using an avocado slicer, why not just use a sharp knife to do it all? Cut around the avocado, use the knife to take out the pit, peel back the skin, and then slice it. It's a no-brainer. It doesn't even work. A waste of money. Third up on my list of what not to buy is a turkey baster. Why would a vegan ever need a turkey baster? Need I say more? And then finally, fourth on my list of what not to buy, it's a pizza wheel. A, they don't cut pizza. You have to go over and back and over and back a million times and it doesn't even work half the time. Second of all, it takes your cheese and puts it everywhere. Instead of buying one of these, opt in for one of these slicers or just use scissors. I grew up cutting pizza with scissors all the time and it works very well. Okay, so there we have it. My five must-have kitchen essentials for going vegan. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love to know what you're using often in your kitchen. And if you did end up getting any of these kitchen essentials, let me know in the comments below which one and what you thought about it. See you next time.